Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be making some book covers. Let's get into it. So before we get started into making these book covers, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's told me how to actually be able to see through this, because in the past I uh, didn't realise that there was a film that you have to peel off. So now I'm able to actually see through it and uh, see what I'm doing. So thank you to everyone who uh, commented uh, telling me what to do and for me being a massive donut. So I don't know how well this is going to go, but I've got this piece of mahogany or sapili, something like that, which um, I'm going to try and resaw to make some book covers. Because uh, my mum does a lot of the pyrography, she makes a lot of books and book binding, and she wanted some different type of book cover. So I had a look through my wood selection, and I'm going to try and resaw it on my bandsaw. Now, in the past, when trying to resaw stuff or cut stuff on this bandsaw, I haven't had much luck. Uh, I bought some new blades not that long ago um, and fitted them. I must admit, I'm not exactly the best bandsaw person because uh, I've tried to fit them and and get all the bushings close together but it never seems to work well I don't quite know what I'm doing I mean it may work fine this time but sometimes I get a bit of drift with the blade and it's it's not getting a nice straight cut and I don't know if that's because maybe the bandsaw isn't powerful enough or whether I've just not set it up correctly but I'm gonna aim for about six mil in the end final finish but I'm gonna cut it probably about six mil over because if I do get any drift then hopefully that will um, account for any of that and then I'm going to hand plane it back to its final dimensions afterwards. Obviously this would be really handy if you had a thicknesser or some sort of drum sander that can take it down to the final thickness for you but I don't and I'd love to get a planer but I am struggling to find a decent one. Um, I've seen some of the Titan ones on screw fix but that doesn't seem to be in stock anymore because that's a planer and a thicknesser which would be really handy to have because I can join and face an edge. Um, and then thickness it underneath, but I'm kind of struggling to find one that I'd really like to get. And also the space to put it, I'm sure I can definitely put it in here somewhere. So anyway, let's get resawing this piece. As I said, I'm probably gonna do about six mil, about 12 mil I reckon I'll, I'll try and cut it down to. I'm really hoping it's gonna work fine off against the fence. If not, then I may end up having to do it freehand and then planing it down afterwards against one of my bench dogs. But Let's see what happens. So before I go and resaw this, I'm going to set my marking gauge to 12 millimeters, or thereabout, something like that, 12, 13 millimeters, and score a line just along here. And then I've got a reference to line my bandsaw blade up against. Okay, so I've just gone to set the fence up and realized that this block of wood is too high for my bandsaw. This only comes up, I think, just under four inches. However, you can do A6 book bindings as well and smaller sizes, which is just over 100 mil, I think. So I'm gonna rip this down along here first, along here, and then I'm gonna resaw it again. So then that should work out a bit better that time. So first off, I'll set the fence and cut it to just over 105. I might just check what an A6 uh, book size is. And then after that, I'll um, I'll go from there. So I've just looked online, and an A6 uh, uh, size is 105 by 148 mil, which unfortunately I can only get about 92 mil if I really push it to the top of this under there. So it's probably gonna have to be about 90 mil wide in the end. Whether that's quite what will suit what my mum does and burns, I'm not sure. But that's what we're going to go for. And if it doesn't, if, if, if it's not the right size, then I guess I'll have to try in the future to cut it by hand or get a new bandsaw. Oh, that's a good excuse, isn't it? So I'm going to mark 90 mil in around one edge. And get my marking gauge again. And set that line up here and score that line along this edge. And then I'll reference the bandsaw blade off against that and cut it down. <laughs> So 
So where I've just cut that line, it's a little bit too big to fit under my bandsaw, so I'm just going to take a couple of shavings off with a hand plane. So now I'm going to bring the fence back over again and try and resaw this. So that didn't turn out as bad as I thought actually. It's a little bit on the crooked side, but once I've planed that down with a hand plane, it should be all good. There's loads of room to get it down to a certain thickness. It's not the widest of books ever. Whether that'll be all right, I don't know. But at least it shows that it can be done with just these kind of tools, um, or if anyone's interested in seeing how I'm going about it. Probably not the right way about going about it, but um, just, just giving it a go. So yeah, next I'm going to cut another one of these down, or maybe maybe even a couple more, um, and see how that goes. So I managed to get three pieces out of that piece of mahogany, Sophili, uh, whatever it is. Um, and they didn't come out too bad. There's a slight slant to them, but once you've planed it, it'll be fine. Um, actually one of the smaller ones that come out is probably better. I probably could have done it a little bit less instead of doing it 12 mil. I probably could have done it about 10 mil, um, cause this is a bit better. But what I'm going to do now is score a line all the way around the edge and, um, Plane it down to around 6mm. I might first just clean up the faces just so it's referencing off a nice, a nice face. So let's go do that. So I've got the uh, wood secured in the vise. I was going to put it across my bench dogs, but it's quite thin and it's, it's a bit awkward to use with this. So I'm going to try it in the vise. Hopefully that works okay. And then I'm just going to first off, firstly clean off uh, one of the faces with a hand plane. <laughs> So I'm just starting on the higher spot to start with because the sole of the plane can't reference and take any off. Don't keep bringing the blade out, otherwise uh, you're just gonna keep digging it in. So whatever spot is highest first, work there, and then you should be able to start making your way across to the smaller side. So I'm now gonna set the marking gauge to the thinnest point on the board at the moment and just get that nice and flush with the front of the cutter and then lock that off. So that's about six mil at the moment and I will scribe it all the way along. And then I will plane back to this line that is scored at them, you can see it. So that line there, as you can hopefully see it's scored around and I will plane back to it. Plane it down to a thin piece. It isn't too bad. It's a bit, 
it isn't my best work, I must admit, but we'll have to see what it looks like. I'm going to give it a sand um, and hopefully it might make it look a bit better um, and then we'll go from there. So I've given it a quick sand. It's not terrible. It's not terrible at all. As you can see, it's fairly thin and consistent all the way around. And I've just skimmed the edges with a hand plane just to smooth them off a bit. And now I'm just gonna cut it to length um, on the ends with the chop saws. Okay, so I have uh, cut the other piece of Sapili up and planed it all down to size and sanded it just like I did the other one and also cut it on the chop saw and now I am left with two pieces and these are for the book covers. They're probably not quite wide enough for what my mum would use but a small, you could just do a smaller book with these. It's annoying that my bandsaw blade doesn't quite go high enough so you can cut bigger things but that's what it is. I could have done it with a hand saw or my Japanese saw but maybe that might be a future video of trying it out that way. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is uh, put some holes in them. And I'm going to drill some holes two in from here. Probably about 10 mil, 11 mil in from the edge. And this is so you can book bind them and actually make it work as a book. So it can fold, uh, so it's fold, so it can open and close. So I'm going to do that on the pillar drill, put a 4mm bit in there and they just tap in and then you turn it over, you've got to hit the other side and it flattens the other side of the metal off so it doesn't poke through. So I've chosen the best face uh, for the front and the back and now I'm going to mark in 20mm and then another 20mm from each edge to be able to drill the holes. And I'm going to square the lines up. Try not to press too hard with this because these have obviously got to come off again, the pencil marks. Alternatively, you could get a piece of masking tape. So I've set my marking gauge to 12 mil and now I'm going to score a line along our pencil marks. And then I can use a braddle afterwards to make a point. Probably best if you've got one of these wheel ones just to roll the marking gauge slightly. That way you don't go too far up it and make too much of a line. So I haven't actually got my braddle with me, it's somewhere else. So I'm just going to use a brad point drill bit and just give it a quick tap at the top and that will just locate in there and give us a nice little point. So just give it a quick tap and you've got a little point that you can locate your drill bit into. As you can see, I've got these all marked out from the edge and from at the top. And then I've put a little bridle mark there so my drill bit can locate and drill a hole. Right, so I've put a bit of masking tape around this so it doesn't go anywhere when drilling. And I'm just gonna drill these four holes out and I'm gonna do it uh, through both of them at once. That way I don't, I don't have to mark it out twice. And I've also got a sacrificial bit of wood underneath so it doesn't break out too badly on the other side. holes have been drilled uh, they're very simple to do and then I'm going to be hitting these called these things called eyelets I think I think they're called eyelets uh, so these are the eyelets and they just simply get hit in I have widened the holes which were uh, here slightly with just a small screwdriver over there just so it's a bit easier to hit in because um, you don't want to go splitting the wood after you've just done all this hard work and uh, yeah it splits and there's a tall uh, which comes with it and you just slot 
the end over it like that and it goes in one of the holes you just hold it and it's away this is really hard to do without is that a bit better yeah so you can just hold it like this and there you go There we go, that is the book covers made. I think they turned out quite well in the end. Yes, they probably could have been a bit wider, but considering my bandsaw uh, height, um, that's the best I could do. I could have uh, used my Japanese saw, which is over there, and cut down it like that, which probably would have worked just as well, but I didn't want to do it like that. Um, I reckon a nice uh, flower or some, something like that, burnt along here, would look quite nice for someone. Unfortunately, obviously this isn't going to be done yet, so you're not going to see what the design looks like. But if you are interested, uh, I may end up posting it to my Instagram, um, which is underscore the pond workshop underscore. I'll leave a little bit uh, on screen now and it'll be a link in the description. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is more of an experiment video, as I said, um, just to see if it's all right to burn on. But I think they turned out pretty well in the end. If you are new to the channel, then make sure that you do subscribe. I think since my last video, we're on 164, which is amazing. So let's just try and keep that up. Um, I appreciate you all watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.